Waves are a must-have skill in motion design because you can do a ton of cool things with them. So let's learn three different ways to make them and I'm also going to show you some of my experiments using them just for fun. First we're going with a classic, wave warp. So here is a shape and let's add a wave warp effect to it. Now let's increase the wave height and the wave width to something like this and then increase the speed to 2. And this is the result decent. Now I want to mention an important feature of the wave warp and that is the pinning. So if we change this to the left edge you can see that the edge is locked in place. I've used this so many times so it's good to know and if you're creating smoke or liquid coming from a tap this can come in handy and you can experiment with different pinning options to get what you're looking for. Now one thing to note is that this is a very perfect wave and so to create some variation we can use a trick I learned from Jake Bartlett and duplicate the wave warp effect. Then let's change the speed to 3 so it's more than the first one. Then we can just experiment with increasing the width of the two wave warp effects to get something we like. The main thing we need to be careful of is creating waves that cancel each other out because it'll just look weird. Here is an example of that. So mess around with the settings until it looks right. Lastly we can change the direction slightly to create further visual interest and variation. I've just given you a quick lowdown of this technique but I would highly recommend you check out Jake Bartlett's tutorial because if you know Jake's tutorials you know they are really in depth and provide a a lot of explanation for why things work the way they do. Before we move on, I created an animation using this wave because I just wanted to experiment with it to see what I could create and of course it is helpful to imagine what you could do with the technique. So here's what I made. In the bottom most child comp you can see it's just a bunch of duplicates of the same wave. I pre comp them and offset the timing of each comp. Then in the main comp we have the background which has some blur and scatter applied Then I duplicated that to create the wave's final comp and added some scatter. There is a circle that I'm using as a mat for this as well as the adjustment layer above with a warp and transform effect. And these don't look like they do much but it does bring some nice detail to the final result. Then there's a holding shape circle with some layer styles applied and a color adjustment layer. I experimented with some pretty wild curves here because it just created this unique result. Finally there is a highlight, up to compensation which I reversed to get this and an outer blur. And that's it. Project files are always available for free if you want to dig deeper. Now I want to mention a limitation of the wave warp effect and this brings us to our second wave type using strokes. So here is a stroke and if we apply a wave warp to it you can see that it distorts the stroke in a very unpleasant way. Here is a fix for this. So to start let's reduce the stroke size to 1 and right click on the layer and add the layer style stroke. Now we can adjust the size and of course we need to change it to the color of our inner stroke. And what's great about this is you can still make use of the pinning function of the wave warp effect. And before we get into the final method, which I think is the most interesting and powerful method, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I've been looking to better understand style and creativity and Skillshare has made it super easy with tons of classes on these exact topics. You can learn almost anything from illustration, design, animation, drawing, storyboarding, business and more. So no matter what area you want to deepen your knowledge, there's a class for you. The classes are designed by creative professionals so you're getting real world insights and practical projects to make learning more effective and more engaging. Another powerful feature is Skillshare's learning paths where they create a learning journey designed to help you master a skill from start to finish. So you can learn a completely new skill like 3D or frame by frame animation to use in your next project or learn how to market yourself as a creative and much more. So if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Now let's get into our final wave and to start we have another stroke and I've used the same technique as before with the layer style stroke. This time we're going to use a displacement map and to drive this we need a map layer. Layer. I created two options so let's take a look by diving into this map pre-comp. For the first option we have the map pre-layer and inside the comp there are just these black and white shape layers. Then I went back and used a CC reptile effect to expand this to the right and then an offset effect to create a continuous animation. I used a time expression for this but you could easily just keyframe it with a loop out expression. And I'll just turn off this expression with this button just to showcase how the offset works and you can see that changing the x value allows us to infinitely animate the contents of this comp. Now back in the main comp let's add a displacement map effect to our line and then change the map layer to our map. Let's remove the horizontal displacement and increase the vertical displacement to 80. And as you can see the white areas of our map push the line up and the black areas 
push it down. Not at all what we're looking for, so let's go back into the map and turn on this adjustment layer, which has a fast box blur effect, and that smooths out our edges. And in the main comp, you can see that this has also smoothed out our line to create these sexy curves, and because we animated the offset of our map, when we play this, we get a nice animated wave. And to take this further, I'm going to turn on the left and right cover layers, and each of these layers is just a 50% gray gradient, where I turned the opacity to zero on one of the sides to make the gray fade out. And this might seem strange, Range, but the reason for this is that the displacement map effect does not create any displacement for 50% gray tones. So look at what happens in our main comp. Using the gray like that pins the edges just like the wave warp effect. Pretty dope, right? But why would we choose this option over a wave warp effect? Well, to answer that, let's look at the map variation I made. So let's turn that on to replace our previous map. Inside that comp, I have a solid with a fractal noise like this, with very high contrast and a non-uniform scale to the height. I also animated the offset turbulence and the evolution to create this result. Then in the previous comp, I added a fast box blur, and now let's see what this does to our line. As you can see, we've created a wave with a bunch of variation that is completely procedurally generated using our fractal noise. So the power of the displacement map is the ability to create unique results with a lot of variation simply by experimenting with whatever you use as a map for your displacement. And of course, I had to mess around with this to see what I could create, and this is where I ended up. Let's go into this comp so I can show you how it was done. So I ended up pre-comping the line and then duplicating it a bunch of times, as you can see. Then I offset their timing to create some randomness. While we're here, I also want to show you what it looks like if you offset them by two in a sequence. That's pretty awesome, right? I'm highly satisfied by this. Anyway, let's undo that and turn on this map layer. What I did with this was click this button called Preserve Underlying Transparency so the map will only apply to the objects below it. And this creates shadows and highlights on our lines for depth, as you can see. Next, I added a curves adjustment to get this. Then I created a fractal noise using the strings fractal type, animated the evolutions, added some fast box blur, and a curves color adjustment. And let me just play that so you can see what's happening. Then I used the screen blending mode to remove the black, and once again, I used the preserve underlying transparency checkbox to mask this onto our lines. Lastly, I added an adjustment layer with a glow, and this is how it came together. I hope you found these techniques helpful and can make your own mess around experiments with them. And as usual, hit subscribe for more motion XP.